Hello everyone, and welcome to this, I guess we'll call it a bonus podcast. There is a question on one of your activity sheets that I suggested that you do on your own. I want to just take a couple minutes here, or maybe a few minutes here, to talk about that activity and make sure that you understand it. I would encourage you to try to work on it on your own first, but if you still are struggling with it, or if you want to check your answer, this will be a good way to check your answer. So the question I'm talking about is the one from our bacterial gene regulation class. And the extra problem deals with a make-believe operon that we call the blob operon. This blob operon makes some sort of enzymes. The problem doesn't say what enzymes it makes, it just says it makes something that converts A to B. It also tells us that there's a regulatory protein called S. S is either a repressor or it's an activator. The problem doesn't tell us it, but we're, we need to figure it out. We know that if it is an activator, that it will bind to a promoter sequence, because that's what activators do. We also know if it's a repressor, that it will bind to an operator sequence. So the first part of the question asks, is it a repressor or is it an activator? Based on what I've told you so far, we don't know. But a good way to figure this out is to ask, what would happen if we mutated S? So let's just write that. If S is an activator, then if we mutated S, I'm just gonna show this by putting an X through it, so that's a mutated S, you would expect that the blob operon would always be off, transcriptionally off, based on what we've discussed so far in this class. That is because if S is an activator and is necessary to activate transcription, if we remove it by mutating it here, we would presume that it would not ever be able to turn on this operon. So we would predict that if S is an activator and you mutate it, operon always off. Likewise, if S is a repressor, then if we mutate S, again showing with a big X there, we would make the prediction that blob, the operon blob, would always be on. So why is that? Well, let's think about that. If S is a repressor and it's necessary to repress transcription of the blob operon, if we remove the S, as we show here, then the ability to repress this operon is now removed, so the operon will now always be on. So in the problem, we're told that if gene S is mutated, the enzymes are synthesized in the presence and the absence of compound B. We're told if we mutate S, that this operon is always on. So from that, we can conclude that S is a repressor. So we've successfully answered the first part of the problem. S is a repressor. It will be bound to the operator when the operon is off, and it will fall off the operator when the operon is on. We know to help regulate whether or not S will be on or off of the operator, it will have to interact with either a coactivator, also called an inducer, or it will interact with a co-repressor also called an inhibitor. Remember, repressors can bind to either act co-activators or co-repressors, just like activators can bind to different co-activators or co-repressors. So which one is involved here? Well, the problem gives us a little bit of a hint because it tells us that this compound B here is involved in regulating the repressor S. Before we jump right in and try to make a determination of whether or not B is a co-activator or co-repressor, let's think about what we would predict to see if it was a co-activator or if it was a co-repressor. So if B is a co-activator, then B is present when the blob operon is on. And let me say that again. If B is a coactivator, this B here, 
its job would be to help activate the blob operon. So that means it's going to be present to bind to the S repressor to pull it off. So in this scenario, if B is a coactivator, it will bind to the repressor to cause that allosteric change to pull the repressor off of the operator. Remember, the coactivator's job is to help activate transcription. So one way it can do that is by removing the repressor. And that's what we have here. B would have to be present in the on state. Now, let's consider the other option. If B is a co-repressor or an inhibitor, then B is present when blob is off. Let me walk through that again. If B is a co-repressor, that means it is going to be present when the operant is off, because that's its job. Its job is to help turn off operands. So up here, that would mean that if B is a co-repressor, when it binds S, it will bind to the operator to effectively keep the blob operon off. If the presence of B activates transcription, then it is a co-activator with S. If B's presence shuts down the expression of the operon, then compound B must be a co-repressor. Okay, so let's see what data we can get from the problem to help us determine if it's a co-activator or a co-repressor. The problem says that normally enzymes are synthesized only in the absence of compound B. I'm going to rephrase that slightly in a way that I think helps us answer the question a little bit better. It'll mean the same thing. I'm going to say that normally the blob enzymes are not expressed. in the presence of B. So normally, blob enzymes are not expressed in the presence of B. So as long as B is present, according to the problem, the blob operon is off. So according to the problem, when B is present, this operon is off. And that's what we see down here. If B is a co-repressor, then B is present when blob is off. So from this, we can be confident in answering our next question here, question two, and that is that B is a co-repressor. Meaning that when B is present, it will help the repressor by binding to it to keep the operon off. Now the question has one more part. And the next question that is asked is, is this an inducible or repressible operon. And this will be the easiest of the three questions to answer. And that is because co-repressors are only found in repressible operons. So this must be a repressible operon. And the reasoning for that, again, let me write it out here. Repressible operons are regulated with co-repressors. So all that trouble we went through to determine that B is a co-repressor helps us answer this question here. Co-repressors help regulate repressible operons. Co-activators help regulate inducible operons. But in this particular problem, our answer is repressible operons. Now, this is a very complicated problem, but if you can understand the, this problem and all the different parts that led us to the answers, then you have a pretty good grasp on how bacterial cells regulate their genes. If you have questions about this, please come see me and I can help answer any questions you might have. If not, I will see you in class. Bye.